Hello, it's Sarah, and we're going to be painting today, guys. I haven't done this yet, but this one is a similar. They're both Deb Antonick. This one just reminded me of my little guy that I just did, and I have these, um, I have so much wood, you guys, so I'm going to do a tutorial for this one, too. I had this, like, look, there's so many little wooden pots you can use, um, <clears throat> anywho, and I didn't like that I put this up here, so I'm going to change it on the next one. You know I can never do anything twice uh, the same. But these are patterns that I got from the DecoArt website. Amer DecoArt um, is a paint brand that I use, DecoArt Americana. Um, and I don't know, I think I saw it on Facebook. Once again, Facebook directed me there. Um, I went over and I happened to look at their um, menu and it had projects and I started scrolling through and I saw these. Now look at this one. This is the one I'm going to do today. This is the biggest picture. It's a little cat and again it reminded me of the project that I just did, the little topiary. I'll show you. Here it is. And that cat, this is um, the pumpkin head guy and this is the cat guy. So, because these are by Deb, they're very similar, you know, but this one is painted on, and I'll leave these on my desk for inspiration. I am going to base coat for you guys right now, just to show you how I do it. I'm going to start at the beginning. These are free patterns. You can go to the DecoArt website and download them. This was the one that I did for the pumpkin, but I just made it smaller. So you get the now also these were done on glass so the paints she used were the glass paints I'm not using those I used colors that I have and I shrunk the pattern down this is the pattern and I just drew it myself I didn't even shrink it down and I just did it however you know this one is a very beginner piece you guys there's no floating it's just all done with base coating so I want to do this one for you too um, set that aside for now and then this one is done on and actually there are some bigger pictures in here okay uh, wait a minute here um, it was done on fabric and Deb used fabric paints I think they're called so soft the fabric paints that she used you get the pattern here's the pattern um, and it's on a canvas pillow cover I suppose I ended up tracing out the pattern which I just had here this I traced the outline of the pattern and we put this under the glow forge and then Joe is able to vectorize it and get it to cut out a piece of wood for me and I got the little spider we didn't include in the painting there's a lot more um, like, let's see if I can find those color pictures again. Anyway, I'm just going to get it going. Base coat. This is the instructions. Um, and what I would suggest is just get a canvas. If you're going to download this and want to paint along with me, just put it on an 8x10 canvas. Um, and you'll be, you'll have a very similar, um, in fact, I'm just going to do the cat in his little Halloween costume and the little um, spider. So there's a couple of pictures that are color, but I don't know why. That's that's all I have, unless I misplaced it. Oh, I have one more here. I do. I think I have this one. No, 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 no. I have another pattern that I downloaded, too. This is called Funky Punkies. And they're just bright colored. Like, I'm, I think I'm going to... Um, I like the witch... So I may just combine a couple of them and make a tag. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that because today is Halloween. Happy Halloween. And I am going to um, probably start painting Christmas ornaments because we have November, December. Um, anyway, we'll see. But these Halloween projects have just been so fun. I just wanted to get this in real quick. So for right now, I'm going to base coat. Um, okay, here's the pattern. So I just put all this together. You just line it all up, and I traced the outside of it. Gave it to Joe, and he printed me out this. So I've 
already put on a sealer, which is I use my all-purpose sealer, the Joe Sonia all-purpose sealer, and I sanded it down. Then the next thing you want to do is take your tracing and just all oh, I'm I'm not I don't even really need to. Hmm. See, I like to wing it a lot, but I just need this line to separate. I'm gonna do it. I'll go ahead and trace it. Um, just hopefully, I have a little piece of tracing paper right here. I keep all my different tracing papers in this like plastic. All I want right now is the separation lines of the collar, the pumpkin, and the head, and the hat. You know, just to separate because those are going to get base coated solid colors. This is a little bigger, so I'm going to line up the collar and trace that bottom line. Not trace it. Um, what is it? I don't know. So I'm just going to make the separation line so that I know where to put my pumpkin color. All right, good. I'm going to line this up because this isn't the exact size that the drawing is. So I'm just doing it little by little. Um, let's make the hat. I can do the hat. Let's do the collar up top by his head. All right. right here and the hat that looks real good I think I'll do that right there and the tail so I'm not going to paint so the tail comes down let's see I guess I made them a little bigger I'm just going to do it by hand so I'll just take a pencil, look it's a Halloween pencil, and just kind of make a line so that the tail kind of comes out of the outfit. And oops, uh-oh, I must not have had, look, this was upside down. You have to make sure when you use graphite paper that it's the right side is going to, see look, that's the right side. If I go like that, it's the wrong side. So see, lesson learned, I have to do that again. But I've done that before with like big projects where I have traced a lot of details on and gone to look and it's not there because this was upside down. You have to check it first. See, when I'm on camera with you guys, I like those little real-time snafus to happen because then you know I'm not perfect. I don't, you know, and stuff happens and you just, you know, just work with it. Got to like figure out what you did wrong and try to do it better. Let's see. There we go. I guess I should have checked. And I don't really need to do the line up here, but what the heck. But this is how you would apply your pattern to the surface, generally. I'm going to leave off all those details and we're just going to paint so now I have I know where to go with my color and I hand drew that one in all right for the pumpkin I'm just using what I have like I said now let's see I'll go to the directions and just show you what it says um, there it is they're, they're called so soft so she has the list of colors and they're all the So Soft Transparent Medium and So Soft Fabric Acrylics. So, I mean, they're called, like I see a, a bunch of colors that sound familiar in the other lines. Oh, there's also So Soft Glitter Accents. So they're um, promoting the, the paints that they sell to paint on fabric. I'm just going to substitute my regular acrylics. Um, and if you guys are painting on fabric, like say you do paint it on... Um, a bag you could go get a bag or you could even get like a um, an apron there are mediums that you can mix with your acrylic paints that will get it to adhere and I've done that tons before too um, all right so for me I'm just going to use um, the orange that I've been using it's called spiced pumpkin and I'm going to base coat that and I'm going to be let's see if she used black yep and lamp black 
for my cat. Let's just double check the painting process preparation. The instructions say the pumpkin body. She used cad orange. Um, I might have cad orange. Let me see. I do. Wow, that is a bright color. I like that, but I think I'm going to use this. Maybe I'll shade with the cad orange. Starting. I think she is using that. It says base coated pumpkin section with cad orange hue corner load oh, red pepper. Boy, it's bright. I kind of want to do it with that color. It's hard to tell from the picture, but she might. I think I am going to switch to cad orange. I'm going to do it because I have a feeling she dry brushes the, um, the highlights and it's just going to pop much better on a darker background. And again, you guys are along for the real time ride with me. I'm trying to find those pictures again. And then let's see about the, the cat head lamp black. All right, so cool. Now, when I base coat, this has already been prepped, so I'm just going to use, let's just get a clean one so it doesn't look so mucky. Um, I use a flat brush generally. That's my preference when I do base coating. Um, but a lot of people have, oh, you know what? A, another tip is people love these. Oh, not that. This one. It's called an oval wash brush. I'm going to try it. Since I have it, this is about a half inch oval wash. I'm adding a little bit of water and I'm going to blot on my paper towels. I'm just going to take you right through how I would do this. And I load my brush like this. I pull a little bit from the paint puddle and I mix it into the bristles. And it holds a lot of paint and I'm just going to put it on just like this. Now, in the directions, um, it says how she does it with the um, fabric medium because she's doing it on um, fabric. Oops, I went over. It's okay. Uh, there's a, a technique that she's using and all that, but I'm not doing it that way. So if you want to follow along with her, that's different. I'm doing it this way because this is just your standard um, painting on wood and I'm just sticking that along that. Uh. Now I have to watch over here because I'm not going to paint the tail. I'm just going to go down his little outfit. And there we go. That's a nice solid coat. You see how I keep pulling the brush back down. I'm just getting off any ridges that I've left on there with the paint. There's some here. And man, th this was beautiful. This brush does, like it holds a lot of paint. So now I'm going to go into the black and do as little. I wonder if I should do the tail um, black or white because the tail has black and white stripes, and I wonder if I base it black, if the white stripes will take forever to cover, or maybe I'll make them. I think I'm going to base it white, and I'm going to do the black stripes. <clears throat> this is just regular lamp black or black. Any black is fine. And I'm going to do his little face, and I just rinse the same brush, loading it the same way, and... It is, I might have to order some more of these. And supposedly they last forever too. Like you can really beat them up. Oh, that's my little parakeet, Sunshine. Sunny, what are you doing? Uh oh, I don't wanna, Kiwi's not with me. I don't wanna get her attention. She'll start nagging me to come and get her. And I just use the edge of the brush to make, to go up against the um, edges. And it's as simple as that. That's how I base coat. And then I'll come back and do another, once this is dry, I'll do another coat. Um, I'm not going to do the edges right now. Maybe um, I'm just putting that in the water 
and I'm going to come to my directions and see what color the collar, okay. Paint the ruffle, paint the green ruffle, stripes and the bow with bright avocado. Now bright avocado might be a different color, but I have avocado. Uh, <clears throat> Let's see, I have light avocado, but I don't have bright avocado. So this is avocado. I think I'm going to use light avocado, and it's not even that bright, but I'll bet you she dry brushes it. I'm sorry, like to highlight it. So I'll go ahead and do it with this color. Although, I mean, it looks fine. I have other brighter um, paints. So I'll come back and when all of this is base coated, and I'll tell you the colors I used. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I got a little carried away. I base coated the whole thing. I actually printed out a picture, like I took a screenshot of the small picture and I blew it up so I could get a better um, perspective with the picture. Um, but, I mean, it's time to float and I'm, I wasn't, I was going to wait till tomorrow, but I really want to do it. So, I'm excited. Um, I like to float with an angle brush and I have some clean water here. I'm going to load my brush and we're going to start with the pumpkin section. You know what I was thinking? The next one I draw, I would put little feet down here. Like give them little feet sticking out the bottom. Yeah, but then I'd have to give them little paws. Eh, it's fine. Um, so I'm going to go over here to where it says, uh, let's start with the cat's head actually. And I'm going to do, I have to dry brush with Indian turquoise. Oh, cool. This is going to be fun. So I'm going to put some Indian turquoise on my um, paper plate. And I'm going to dry brush with one of my new, these are called Lunar Blenders. So let's try it. I'm going to dry brush. I just put on his face with... Um, I think I used a chalk pencil. I'm just going to go right over everything. It's fine. Those are those lines are just there to give me a guideline. But I forgot that I needed to, you know, do other things to it. So I've loaded this up with no water in the brush. And now I'm just let me just get a fresh paper towel. And for dry brushing, you want the brush dry. So I'm just going to blend it off a little bit and then I'm going to come in and I'm just going to gently um, pull it down around. I'm just going to go over everything kind of. Let me come in and it's super, super subtle. I'm just going to give a little highlight, like a, a little shine. Maybe pull it over on the edges to get the uh, the shape of that. I'm just going right over his whole face. And it's really, these Lunar Blenders, they have a little bit of a thicker bristle, a uh, stiffer bristle. But man, they do a good job. Thank you, Lisa Shaw, for telling me about these. Um, that's it. I think I'm going to call that done. See, I'm a heavy hand, so it doesn't take me very long to be able to get the result that I want. Um, you know, and I'm not proficient at dry brushing, but that looks about like the picture. It looks good enough. Man, I want to continue doing it. I want to put it all over everything. <laughs> I want to see if it's on the spider. I'm just going to go here to the spider. Um, stipple the spider with lamp black, picking up Indian turquoise to softly blend. I'm going to, I'm going to dry brush them. I'm just going to dry brush them because I feel like it. Stippling is a bit different. It's more of a pouncing and it might make them look furrier. Maybe I'll do that too. But this is just too cool. I'm going to do a little bit on the back. I have a lot of paint on my brush, so I have 
uh, plenty. I just don't want to waste it. That is so cool, you guys. This is what I really missed about decorative painting is when I do these techniques that I, because I float all the time. All right, I'm putting that in water. All right, so my little cat face is, it's like a highlight. Um, let's see. Um, paint the ears dark rose, shade with red pepper, and highlight with baby pink deep. I just grabbed, I base coated it with, because I have, Antique Mauve, I have a lot of this. No one ever uses it in their patterns, so I decided to use that. I pulled some bubblegum pink for my light pink, and then what did I pick for a oh, Rookwood? I picked for my dark pink. And actually, this is more of like a brownish red, Rookwood red it's called, so let's see what that looks like. And I mean, I can always change it if it's not showing up or something, you know, because I am substituting colors so I'm just going to corner load into that and ble blend it out on my palette paper. And then I'm going to shade on the inside of his ear. I might need a little more or a little darker color because I, I think like maybe I'll go with candy bar. Candy bar might be... Um, Sorry, when I'm doing things and I'm thinking I can't talk. Yep, I think I'm going to go darker because I'm going to be shading all of the, um, I'm going to shave the button, the nose, and the top of the, I think I'm going to go a little darker. I mean, I can see it, but I think it'll be, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go a little darker. So that was Rookwood. Let me show you what. Um, either candy bar, brown, or like maybe deep burgundy. Let's see. I want to show you the difference. Like this is, this is redder. Um, heritage brick. It's a little bit, maybe it's a little darker than this. And then this is cranberry wine. Ooh. I don't even know. I think Candy Bar is um, in my other uh, bin. Ooh, Red Iron Oxide? No, Sonoma. Ooh, I'm using Sonoma. I think Sonoma will be nice and dark. And this is a Delta Ceramco color. It's not an Americana color. It's a little bit more brown. And the idea is I just want it to show up. I think I'm going to do it on the, yeah, this is going to be great. And now, so this color is called Sonoma. Oh, Sonoma Wine to be exact. Yeah, that's going to show up nice. Um, I just spit on it. All right, I think I'm going to be shading the little, um, these little stripes on the bottom part of his, um, see these? Those are all going to be, I'm going to go to a smaller brush just because I know myself and I really walk my color down. Um, so I need to keep this a little bit smaller. But I'm going to go on these right here. Um, good, I'm in the shot. We didn't get many trick-or-treaters. Uh, we haven't been lately. I mean, in the last couple years, we've, um, plus it's the uh, coronavirus, so I don't think maybe a lot of people didn't even go out. But we got some of the little ones from our neighborhood, which is good. Um, and tomorrow is November. So no more decorative painting month, but I think I'm still going to paint a few more things. And like I said, I definitely want to do some ornaments. So I'll try to come up with some ornaments that we can do together. Um... 
I know we want to try and find some uh, ornaments that we can cut on the glow forge. I need my um, mop brush. Just put too much paint there, but then I can just pull it down along the water's edge. Um, I've seen a couple of uh, SVG files for um, Glowforge patterns for 2020 um, ornaments that are like funny, you know, because, um, well, 2020 hasn't really been funny, but it's been, you know, the toilet paper shortage and all that type of stuff. Anyway, um, I'll let you know. Maybe I'll do a giveaway. Again. I'm trying to do more videos you guys because it really does make me happy and it is my serenity when I come in here. I was just doing a lot more um, reading about recovery and uh, especially after my brother died. Um, Alright so let me see what color I do anything else on the face with let's see so I shaded now I gotta highlight the ears too but I'll let them dry um, paint the blue of the eye with Indian turquoise first I have to oh, paint the white of the eye with buttermilk shade with brown so let's go ahead and get some buttermilk I wonder what the mouth is paint the blue I think the mouth is white too I don't know why it's not saying it you might notice on your patterns too if you have it um, it might be missing uh, the eye directions but you know what we're smart and we can figure it out so I'm using a round brush to do this and I generally use a flat brush to base coat but I think I'm gonna put these little guys in with a round brush start in the middle and then I work my way to the edge and just be careful because circles tend to grow on you because you'll keep trying to fix it even it up and then next thing you know it's a giant circle and this does not have to be a perfect circle I mean you could stencil it in if you wanted it to be a perfect circle but I like the fact that it's hand painted and you want those little imperfections to be part of it you know just a thin coat two thin coats and I'm going to do his mouth too. And then he'll be a little cousin for my little, um, actually he's a bat. He's a cat bat. I don't know what he is. The little guy that I made uh, before. The topiary. I think he's considered a bat. I have a cat, a bat, and a pumpkin. And I'm going to do his mouth. Just going to start in the center. Oh, and just work. As you push down, you can make it flatten out. And just bump it right up to the edge. I'm glad we're doing his face because then he will Oops, see how I went down too much? So you, you know what? If you don't like it, take a Q-tip and just push up away so that you can f get the line back that you wanted. You can take the whole thing off while it's still wet actually. But I just don't want to go too overboard. Sometimes uh, when I'm just um, fixing it, if I went out of the lines, it'll get too big, you know? I don't want them to I like to keep the proportion as best I can. I think one side of his mouth is already a little wider than the other because I believe I hand drew this. I didn't trace it because um, I just used a uh, chalk pencil. All right, I think I'll stop. And I'll go ahead and do another coat for his nose. Now I changed the nose, the nose on the picture is now wait I want to put put away I don't remember what color I used rookwood I think it was rookwood I'm gonna use that um see the picture it has like a little bit more of a stitched 
nose. So I just gave him a cat nose. I just figured, I don't know, my guy needs a little cat nose. And I'm going to use that same round brush and the, um, I'm using Antique Mauve. It's just a pinky color. It's the same color that I did the ears with, inside of the ears. And just get that. I think there's something. Oh, no, it's just dry brushing. I thought there was like a piece of uh, brush hair there. And then I'm going to, I was thinking I'm going to give them wire whiskers. Like I'm going to glue wire whiskers on there. So while we're at it, I may as well go in with my second coat on the eyes. You know what, I meant to throw another coat on the button on his little outfit too. But we're going to be floating and dry brushing and stuff, so I can wait because I'll... Uh, darken it up after all the other stuff. I can just go right on top of it. So I'll do that next while these are drying again. We'll come back down to the bottom and um, I never highlighted his ears and highlighted this stuff but well, alright I'll do that then. I'm going to get the bubble gum out. Just a lighter pink that's going to show up in the ears. And let me look at the picture. And it's just kind of along this edge. It's a float. And I'm going to put it here. I'm going to start at the top of the ear, actually. Push it down. Last Halloween I went to a Halloween party and Joe and I were peanut butter and jelly. It's cute. I think I'll do the top of this pom-pom. And that's all I'm going to do right now, but that looks cute. I could probably do the outer edge of the you know what, I'll switch to that smaller brush just because these are small little areas. So I have different size brushes. I might as well use them. Because see how much paint I put on my brush? I'm just a heavy hand. Like, it's hard for me to back off when it comes to color, dude. I'm sorry. So now I just tapped tap the water um, and it it'll blend it out a little and I my brush is still loaded so I have I have plenty of paint and water on my brush so I just keep going and it's getting oh no I still have plenty and that's it I did all of them I'm gonna do the blue with a different color I'm sure um, and we'll have to go along the whole thing too so we'll see what it tells me to do but I want to go down to I'm gonna have to do a second coat on the eyes and mouth but on the pumpkin body it says to shade with red pepper I think that's this I'm gonna use the Sonoma wine the same well I have it out the same color that I just used for um The rose color and I'm gonna go first underneath his little collar on the body so on the just go all the way along here and I'll pity pat it because I'm a pity patter and I'm going right over those um, chalk lines that I put on right over the buttons because um, I'll touch them up at the end. And 
and I'm going to mop it a little bit. It didn't come down as much as I'd like. I think I'll go over that a few more times. I could use an even bigger brush, really. Um, then I'm going to pull up on... So if you look at the picture, you can see that it's shaded to the left side of these two and then to the right side of these two to give the pumpkin that little bount, the bouncy, not bouncy, bumpy. I'm going to start at the bottom and pull up the left side of these. You need plenty of water in your brush, you guys. You got to have water to make it move. And also then you can mop it out a little wider. Looks good. I'm going to do, I could even go bigger though. I'm, I'm going to keep sticking to this brush. This is a, it's my new half inch Josonia uh, Sure Touch Angle. They didn't have any bigger ones. That's why I, this was the bigger, biggest size they had of her brushes. I just really loaded it up dark. I think we're going to dry brush the highlight, so I'm excited about that. I love to do different techniques. That one was so dark. I'm just flipping it around because I'm going to do the other side of the pumpkin. And I'm just going to um, get a piece of Q-tip. I kind of don't like where this one's lining up. I'm just taking off that. I think I'm going to move it over a tiny bit to kind of get these a little more centered. So I'm going to start it here. I tried calling Liam today. My I should have called him back, but um. Halloween is his favorite holiday. That's my nephew, my my brother's uh, youngest. And his, also his cousin, well, my niece Rachel had a baby in May, and she was a little unicorn. So cute. Yeah, we didn't get very many trick-or-treaters. I remember Maya was a ladybug when she was little. Oh my gosh, she was a bumblebee one year. And with the little wings, it just looks so cute. I'm just going to start here. And pull, just keep going. Loading is a challenge, but I just keep sticking to it. And see, look how much color. I'm getting my bigger mop. My floats have gotten darker. And I'm just going to start at the bottom and just pull it a little bit further along that water line. I kind of want to go back here. I have to go under there again because I just don't feel like it was. But I'm going to go back up. I'll let this rest for a minute. I think I'm going to come back one more time up this one. It just doesn't, it doesn't match the rest. I'm going to go give the, um, the mouth a second coat. You know what's cool about those pumpkins? The pumpkins that I was... Um, I'm going to do the pumpkin with you guys, too. I just figured this was ready to go, and I couldn't resist it. I just, you know, can't help it. I get excited. Oops. But the pumpkin has no floating. It's just base coating. So I'll definitely do that, too. And you could probably do that with your with kids, speaking of grandkids and stuff. 
because you know anybody can do this I'm telling you guys the designing is the tricky part that's why I love decorative painting because I don't have to worry about that someone else has gone to the trouble to pick all the colors and um, draw the pattern draw the design for me so um, all I have to do is play have fun I love it and um, that's why I'm getting back to it I'm excited about that I have I brought out my little um, pumpkins that I did out of polymer clay too um, I'll show you those when I do the little pumpkin guy um, but uh, painting you know it's my first love what can I tell you I'm just going to do a little bit more on the nose since I have that color out too. I think it just needs to get darkened up a little bit over this side for some reason. And when I highlight it, it'll pop. I'm going to shade and highlight it too, just like the ears. I'm going to go under his outfit again. I mean under his little collar. I'm going to try and get this to come down. Um, sometimes you can pre-wet the surface too to put more water down and that way when you mop you can pull it further down. Um, I think Maxine Thomas definitely pre-wets her floats a lot to get them but I tend to pity pat them and I get it to be so see I can I don't know it takes practice but we all kind of get the result we want I'm just going to tuck this right here and I'm going to reload my brush but that got it much darker see how much darker that is now I like it and then I'll do this other side in a minute let me read here for a second. I want to see what it says about um, the cat head. So, paint the mouth and the white of the eyes with buttermilk, shade with brown, and highlight with white. So I'm going to be shading and highlighting, and then we're going to paint the blue of the eye with Indian turquoise and shade that. Oh man, it's going to look so cute. Um, so I will... Uh, shade I'll come back and do that in a sec I think I might need to do the mouth one more coat but once I shade it it might be okay um, all right then let's go to the body oh wait the ruffle so paint the green ruffle stripes and bow with bright avocado shade with olive green and highlight with apple green so I could do that shade and I decided to use here's my greens let's see I do have apple green and I'm going to use Hauser dark I I based it with this I'm going to highlight with that and I'm going to shade with that so I'm going to go ahead and shade I want to see can you tell if it's shaded on the hat I might have to look at my my small picture it's really hard to tell but I think I might shade the um, the stripes on the hat too. So I'll do a part two though, guys. I'm not going to stay. You know, I don't think I'm going to finish the whole thing in this video. But let me try and shade under his head under his little chin on the um, collar with this dark um, Hauser green. Now I almost said dark forest. So any dark, this is like a kind of a pine green, needle green too. Boy, all the pine needles are falling in my neighborhood. I live like in the Pinelands. So there's a lot of um, pine trees and oak trees. It's a mess out there. All the acorns and pine needles are falling.
And I gotta mop it just to soften it out so it doesn't look like a stripe. And then I'll decide if I need it darker. It should be shaded under here too. So I think once I add the blue, what am I using to shade my blue? I think I pulled Victorian blue. I'm going to try that now because I want to see if it's going to, I think it's going to be dark enough. I'm going to go to the little brush and go up against that green ruffle. Gonna have to blend it out. Um, grab the mop real quick, cause eh, it looks good actually. I think I'm okay. Looks good. This is the part that gets me so excited is how it starts to come together, like look like something. Gonna have to highlight them too. Can you see? I know you can't really see, but if I come out of the shot, then that's there's no point. Okay. See that looks better. It looks like they're separated now. Um I'm going to drink a water. Um. Oh, good night, James. Got the ruffle and bow. Huh, that must be a different bow. Why don't we finish his face and then I'll finish up tomorrow. So I'm just going to take a little more of the buttermilk and make sure that mouth is solid and then I'm going to put, I'm going to shade and highlight the nose and then I'll be able to shade and highlight or maybe at least just shade these and we'll finish his little face, okay? OMG, he's just going to be so cool once we get him to come alive. We're going to bring him to life. All right, that looks good. I'm going to shade and highlight his nose. Let's see. I think I'm going to shade his nose at the bottom. So in other words, along the point, pointing down. And then we'll highlight the top edge. Ooh, this seems like the wrong color. I don't know. Well, I think I used the right color. Um, so I'm going to go, I think I'm going to stick the color right here. And just walk it up. Like that. I don't know, maybe it should be along the side. And then, I think everything else is looking pretty darn good. I'm gonna finish underneath his collar. Remember I said I was gonna come back um, on this side of his collar. I love it. I think I should go along the bottom too. Just like, just along the whole bottom. And I was telling Joe, the next one I make, I think I want to give him like little feet sticking out the sides. But then he would need hands, wouldn't he? Little paws. I don't know. We'll see. He looks just fine the way he is. 
but this will get them to be grounded. So yeah, so Joe mode today. I think it's supposed to rain again tomorrow, so that's why I'm glad this is going to be ready to go. Oops. I'm going to see what happens when I zoom. Um, so I can just come down and paint tomorrow. I'm going to be so happy. <clears throat> and his eyes are going to be blue. So let me... Um, we're going to shade the eyes with brown and highlight with white. I think I picked, what did I pick for brown? Burnt Sienna. I just love Burnt Sienna. So it's not really a brown. I mean, it is brown. It's sort of like a reddish brown. But I just love it. It's my fave. So I am going to shade his eyes on the bottom. and highlight them on the top. Am I in the picture? Yes. And I'm going to do the same thing on his mouth. Although on the picture it kind of looks like it even goes between each teeth, between each tooth and stuff. So I'll just play around and see what I feel like doing. See that's the thing. I'm going to just do it as I want to. I think I got some dirt in there, but that looks good. I'm going to highlight with pink, and I think I'm going to do the ears again with a little bit of pink. Let me take a look. Um, we'll see. See, that's the thing, you can always go back and forth and add if you want to. Um, boy, I have a lot on there, I know it. So I'm going to start at the top and work my way down that time. Got a little bit on the black. I'm just wipe it off the black. I'm going to do the same thing. I have a lot of pink on my brush. I'm going to start on in the tip here and just kind of, hmm, I should be going this way. That's a lot. I like it though. And then I'm going to put it on this top part of his nose. That's a lot. I might have to shade it again to get it to calm down a little bit. I'll probably shade it again. I have to do the top part of his mouth, although I think I'll highlight it up there. It said to highlight with um, white. Pretty sure I have white. See, that pink just looks really bright to me right now. But you know what? That's what the great thing about... This isn't like a realistic painting. It's a, it's a Halloween fun piece. So bright color sometimes can be super fun. So the brighter the better almost, right? You know what I mean? Like, don't sweat it. Just embrace the colors. And this is just very subtle. Oops, my hand was wet. And go across here with the white. And then, you know what I'm going to do? I'll do the black. I was going to shade. I don't think I have any black out right now. But I think I'm going to shade here with black to kind of, I don't know why. I'm going to do the nose. We 
can add the blue. These turquoises have that she's been using, the other turquoise is just called turquoise. This one's called Indian turquoise. They're so beautiful. I just love them. They're beautiful. And the shading color I'm using is called Victorian Blue. So pretty. And again, I'm going to use a round brush. And I, you know, I'm going against my own rule, but I do some basic circles mainly with a round brush. And I'm just going to place a circle. And you could change this if you wanted to. Make the eyes how you want them, but I am doing them the way she has them on her design, which is just a big dot in the middle of another dot. So let's see if I can find it. See right here? A big dot in the middle of another dot. And I'm going to try and line it up. In the, I'm going to start in the middle and just try not to go and you could draw this first, you know, um, to make sure you get it right. I mean, that probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Because like I said, these circles, they will grow on you. And, you know, you kind of do want the eyes, the windows to the soul. You want them to be even or else something's just going to be off when you look at your little buddy. Like, you're looking a little off there, bud. See, I went down a little low. So I'm going to just push it up. I can feel the heat. The heat just came on. And we need it. I mean, I think it's getting down into the 30s at least at night here. Lately. Oh, I think that one's a little bigger than the other one. I'm going to go a little bigger on this side. See what I mean about they grow. It won't be that noticeable though, guys. Don't, don't work, get worked up over it. But he's already getting cuter. All right. Let's see. It says, what about the mouth? Line and stitching with white. I think that's on the nose. I'm going to do his a little bit more floating. I, as I looked at this picture, I noticed it looks like she's just sh shaded over here and over here. It doesn't have to be exactly like hers, you know? Um, but I'm a copycat. I let that blue dry. What else could I do? All right, I am going to shade the black, and then I mean that's it. Let's see, that's all it says for his head. Line the stitching with white. Um, the spider, the tail. Um, but I, I mean, I gotta line his mouth. She's not telling me to, but he definitely has lines, so I'm gonna do it. Put a little black out. And just above his nose, I'm going to put a little black, like so it'll go over the dry brushing a little bit and might make it look a little like a shadow, like the bridge of his nose kind of thing. That's my thought anyway. So right here. I like it. I think she might want me to dry brush the tail. Maybe I'll do that before bed. It says, for the tail, paint the white stripes with buttermilk, shade with brown, and highlight with white, and then paint the black stripes black and highlight with Indian turquoise. Ooh, I like that idea. I'm going to look at the picture and see which side. She's got them highlighted at the on this side, so let's do that. Because I have it out. That's just what I used for the um, his eyeballs. 
I'm going to load with my angle brush and I'm just going to float. This is the color that we dry brushed his little face with, but I'm going to float on all these black checks. So right here, That is so fun. I love when it starts to come together like this. I think I'm going to glue a like a block to the back of him like I did with the little um I'll show you my little gnome by uh who is that gnome by Renee Mullins, I think. I'll show you my little garden gnome. How cool is that, you guys? And I'm gonna do, keep it to, I'm gonna do this right here, and this right here. That's how I'm doing it. Right here, this little garden note, by um, Renee Mullins. I just glued a block to the back of it, actually came with it. And that's how that stands up. So I think I'm going to do that to this one too. I could probably have come up with a more, um, you know, if I'd have thought about it. I just, we rushed this. This was like a rush job of, I just wanted to paint it. And um, I didn't really think about that at, at the time that I wanted to stand them up. Because I could have given them feet. Like there's so much I could have done. But I just went with the design, the, the one-dimensional design, and didn't really think about how I could make it into a three-dimensional design type thing. You know what I mean? I don't want to, oops. Okay. <clears throat> We're almost ready to add, I'm going to go ahead with the black, since I have black in my really fine point my fine fine liner this is the Chris's epic script liner that I got from Chris Hoy I'm gonna do his mouth since I have black out and it's just a line down the center And little teeth marks. So teeth, let's see, there's my picture. I'm pretty sure I can just start in the middle and work my way to the edge. Yeah, there's one, two, three, four. So one and then three. One. Then I'll split that in half. Oh boy. Oh boy. Black can be a tricky one when you're trying to um, get it off of the Q-tip. It just smudges. Gotta stay up on the tip of the line or stay up on the tip. Don't let it come down and, and make the line wide because you can do that but you just, if you stay up on the tip it'll be okay. All right, let's shade the blue eyeball with um, Victorian blue I put out. I'm going to shade. Well, it's too wet. You got to make sure your brush is not too wet. If you see too many water bubbles on your palette, just blot it again. And 
And you can always pick up more water. If you don't like what's happening on your palette paper, it's not going to look any better on your piece. So, you know, get it how you want it before you go to your piece. Yeah, I feel like I could do those a little darker. And then I think we're highlighting it as well with the with the white again. So let's see his eyes. Highlight with white and paint the pupil with lamp black and dot with white. I don't know if his nose looks good. I mean, I think it does. I could put little hairs in his ears. She kind of looks like she did add a little bit of... It's hard to see because this is blown up and it gets distorted. And she did it on fabric, so she did it different than I did. Mm. Were we supposed to highlight? Yes, we were supposed to highlight the, um, the bottom edge of the green ruffle. I didn't do that yet. So you have to wait for things to dry or else you'll pick up what you put down. So that's why I like to skip around and I keep saying I'm going to finish but while I'm waiting, I can't just wait. I gotta do something else. I'm gonna load this up with lots of color and water, and I'm gonna run it along the bottom edge here of the ruffle, the green ruffle. I'm going right over those polka dots, so. I might lose them a little bit. Maybe I'll come back and put another coat of color on top of them. I'm stopping here. I'm just tucking it. Is that showing up? Because, see, I chose these colors, so I have to say, yeah, I think it's showing up good. I could probably do... <clears throat> some shading and highlighting on the hat while I have these colors out I could shade the blue I'm gonna do it on this side I could shade. I didn't do the purple. There's really not a lot of purple on here, just on the hat and this button. I'm going to shade the green. I don't even know if I was in the shot. Sorry. And I got to do the purple with diopsazine. I don't know how you say it, but dia, I don't even have a um, label anymore on there. I should have another one of these. It's running out. I think these designs um, by Deb Antonick just were so colorful. That's definitely a thing that attracts me to pieces. I'm very attracted to dry brushing too, the way it looks. It's such a cool technique. It's um, not even in the shot. I think I should do both sides. All right, I'm ready to, um, you know what? I'm just gonna highlight the top of the eyeball because I think that blue is perfect. I don't need to shade it more. I'm gonna go with white on the top. Oh boy, that's a bit bright. I 
think I did not highlight. I need my smaller brush. The um the blue checks that are on the bottom of the collar. I'm just gonna highlight. Oops. Way too much um moisture in my brush. I'm gonna do that again. I'm going to blot and just try to um, go a little bit easier. There we go. Oh boy. See, when you load your brush correctly, you can go several floats at a time. I think I will come back and redo the dots and just make them, um, and yeah, even the call, like the highlighting is, it's kind of a little fading into the, but I'm going to, uh, let me finish this other side. Um, but I think it's going to be okay. I'm going to start at this side this time. Um, I mean, I think it works. All right, now I have to do a black dot in the middle of the eyeball, and I could just dip dot it, but I think I'm going to paint it, and I kind of don't want to put it in the middle. I want to put it a little bit to the, hmm, I think I'm going to put them looking over this way at the spider. So I, I'm going to put it a little bit towards the right. I don't know, it might make them look goofy. I'm not an eye specialist. And, because I'm gonna hang the spider off his tail. I think that looks kind of cute. I think that looks cute. He Like, see, he doesn't have an eyelid or anything, but I think that's good. I'm not gonna, I think this one's a little smaller. Good, I don't want it to grow too much. And then I could take a little bit of white and highlight his teeth a little bit. Just like... You can't really notice it too much because it's not shaded. If it was shaded much darker Oops. Because the background color is buttermilk. So it's not straight white. I think that popped them up a little bit. That is so funny. I don't want to cover the black line. always punch up the black um, line. He has gone to the dentist. He has done a good job brushing. All right. And then the last little thing we need to do is make a white dot on his eye. Mm, they're stitching around his um, nose for the pattern, but I am going to leave, 
I don't think I'm going to make stitching. I don't know. I'll think about it. He might need little nostrils or something. But I'm going to use just a, um, a stylus to put a little dot of white on his eyeball. Like right here. Right there. I could put a little like stroke of white to highlight his nose. That might be nice. Like this. That looks cute. And then he's going to have whiskers. I think I'm going to put a couple of little hairs in his ears in black. Just because. He's got hairy ears, that's why. Like my husband. And I think his face is done. I'm going to have to figure out, um, you know what else? I could shade the, um, the tail because I have these colors out right now. So it's like I just want to use them while I can. Um, that is the wrong color. That was way redder than, uh, here we go, burnt sienna. So I highlighted this side of the black, so I'm going to shade this side of the white. Right? Makes sense? Makes sense to me. Uh, I suppose I could highlight the other side with white. And, oops. I just went on the black, Doofus, Doofus McGee. And a couple more. Boy, tomorrow I'll do part two and we will do the pumpkin, the rest of the pumpkin body. I'm wondering if it is, um, dry brushed to highlight it and I think it gets glitter and you know it's just fun. I'm going to go on this side. Look how OMG it's starting to look cute already. I think I still have a little work to do on and I think she outlined things too in black which always helps. I might and I might not. I'm going to shade the other side of the hat because it's rounded. So I think I don't want it to be just shaded on one side and highlighted on the other. I want to shade on both sides because then it gives the object a rounded effect to it. Um, I can put the highlight down the middle. I think I'll dry brush it down the middle. I'm not sure what she calls for on the hat. I'm going to have a look. And I will let you know. I need more color. Man, that looks cool. Um, on the purple. So see, I'm going to see if you can tell what I'm doing. Diopsine. Diopsazine. If I walk it into the center even more, it's really cool. So you get the idea. I think I could go a little darker with the green. I didn't get it too good on this side with the green. Um, but that's about it for tonight, you guys. All right? He has a face. OMG. He's coming along. And uh, it makes me happy. See, he's got his little buddy here. This is his buddy. This is a bat. And this is a cat. 
And this is a pumpkin head guy. All right, so I'll be back with a part two. Good night. Thanks for watching. Happy Halloween.